this holy day of Basant Panchami, we begin the ceremony of initiation on behalf of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and the illustrious, merciful acharyas of our Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Parampara. Everyone, please repeat after me. Om Apavitra Pavitrova Sarvavastam Gatopiva Ya Smadet Pundari Kaksham Sa Bhayabhyantara Suchi Sri Vishnu Sri Vishnu Sri Vishnu Either pure or impure or having passed through all conditions of material life, if one can remember the lotus-eyed Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, becomes clean both within and without. At each occasion where there was taking of vows, where there was a commitment to the divine seva of the Lord, Srila Prabhupada would have us begin by chanting this particular verse. Because it encapsulates the very essence and purpose of the initiation ceremony. Whether we are pure or impure, by remembering Krishna, we become purified. Because Krishna is pavitra, he is supremely pure. When we associate with the pure, we become pure. Srila Prabhupada would often give the comparison, if you put an iron rod in fire, it takes the qualities of fire, becomes red and very hot. And the longer you keep it in the fire, the redder and hotter it becomes. So what we associate with is so much what determines our state of consciousness. Our state of consciousness determines what we speak, what we think, and our actions as well. Since living in this material world from a time that cannot be traced with our mortal intelligence. We have been associating with the three modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. In this age of Kali Yuga, especially the modes of passion and ignorance are very powerful. Due to the contact of these interactions, we have very much been distracted away from the true nature of ourself. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he spoke a beautiful verse. Nityo Siddha Krishna Prema Sadya Kabunoi Sravanadi Sudhi Cheti Kodi That love for Krishna is within everyone. It is our greatest potential. 
It is the only happiness that can satisfy the true self. And that love is awakened. It's not that we have to find it. It is who we are, who we've always been, and whatever we decide, we can never be anything else but a lover of Krishna. We just forget. And in that forgetfulness, we think and we speak and we do things that com complicate our life with so much karma, actions and reactions. But when we chant Krishna's holy names and associate with those who love Krishna, that love is awakened. Srila Prabhupada gives the example that the sun puts its energy in wood. Even though it looks like wood, when you put fire on wood, due to association, the fire element of the sun of the wood comes out and it is fire. So similarly, we are all eternally servants of Krishna. The soul is eternal. Jivara Swarupoy Krishna Renitya Das. But our hearts and our minds have become like wood in the sense we've lost connection with it. But it's within us. And when we associate with Krishna, who's like the sun, then that element of our own spiritual quality, the light, of our hearts, the love of our souls awakens. Not only does it give light to our life, and not only does that love for Krishna or bhakti burn away all of our selfishness, our arrogance, our greed, but it can give light to the whole world. Krishna is non different than his name. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. Krishna himself, in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, has declared that the supreme benediction he has given to the whole world is that he has descended in his holy names. Nam Nam Akariba. Nijasarava Shaktis. And he has invested all of his power, all of his beauty, his complete self within the names. And it's so easy. There's no hard and fast rules for chanting. And this verse tells us whatever situations we go through in this world, because just becoming a devotee doesn't necessarily make material life any easier on the external platform. Still there's reversals and challenges and betrayals, and still there is disease and old age, and the body has to die. So when we're passing through those situations, whether they're happy times or very challenging times, if we remember Krishna, if we take shelter of Krishna, we become purified. And sometimes challenging times are better opportunities. Because Draupadi was a devotee. So one could think, Draupadi was such a nice devotee, why did she have to get insulted by Dushasana and Duryodhana in public that way? Why did she have to suffer like that? She remembered Krishna. She was married to Arjuna and Yudhisthira and Bhima, Nakula, Sahadev. So they were always talking about Krishna. They were always worshiping Krishna. So she was Krishna conscious. But the, but the highest point of her Krishna consciousness is when she was being stripped by Dushasana. At that point, she was helpless. 
She was in such a crisis. Every day she would chant Krishna's names, but not like that particular day in that assembly. The challenge that she was in, she turned to every other situation, but she saw nothing else could save her. And she cried out, Hey Krishna, Hey Govinda, with such feeling. Sharanagati, with such a state of surrender. And Krishna appeared and protected her in such a way that even 5,000 years ago, we're always talking about her. If that didn't happen, Draupadi wouldn't be very important to us. Yes? Being the wife of the Pandavas is a nice thing. But how she called out Krishna's name and the miracle Krishna showed to, is what is the greatest event of Draupadi's life. So if we call Krishna's name with faith, with humility, and with feeling, then Krishna, who's always in his name, he reveals himself. Krishna tells us in the Gita, yegatamam prapadyante tam stadaivabhajamyaham, that according to how we surrender to Krishna, that's how he will reciprocate. So in this case, if we chant the holy names kind of falling asleep or thinking about so many other things, then we make some progress because at least we're chanting and that's good. But if we really chant in this mood of Sharanagati, taking shelter, understanding with faith that this is the prime benediction that God has given us. Then Krishna appears accordingly, reveals himself. And as Krishna reveals himself to us, naturally, the fire of our love for Krishna awakens. And the fire of that love, that bhakti, can burn away all of the miseries and sorrows and all of the selfish desires that are the cause of those sorrows. You see in the world, in Kali Yuga, when people are really selfish, they're usually so determined to get things done that oftentimes they become hugely successful. And that's that's the standard of success. But if we associate with devotees, we read Srila Prabhupada's books, then we're reminded of what real success actually is. To remember Krishna through chanting his names with sincerity, with humility, with devotion. Today is a very special day. It is Basan Panchami, Saraswati Puja, the appearance day of Raghunandan Thakur, Raghunath Das Goswami, Srimati Vishnu Priya, the disappearance day of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, who else? The appearance day of Pundarik Vidyanidhi and also Madan Gopal. <laughs> off his sari to... <laughs> and today is very special because all the people who are coming forward with such sincere devotion to take initiation 
are the children of our congregation who from early, early childhood, some from birth, have been nurtured and nourished with devotion by their parents. This is very special. Raghunath Das Goswami, when he was a little boy, his father's guru, Yadu Nandan Thakur and Balaramacharya, they brought him to visit Haridas Thakur in a place called Chandpur, which is Adi Saptagram. Because Haridas Thakur, even though they were literally multi-millionaires, the parents of Raghunath, they were like the local kings of the whole Saptagram area. Still, they had devotion to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates. And at this time, they were devotees of Krishna. So when Haridas Thakur, who was by caste an untouchable, came to Chandpur, they brought little Raghunath there to receive his blessing. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastra Koi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. Because they really wanted their child to inculcate, to imbibe this spirit of devotion, of Dharma. But little did they know to what extent that fire would blaze. <laughs> In the association of Haridas Thakur, when he was just a small child, seeing his taste for the holy name, seeing his compassion for all living beings, seeing his love for Krishna affected him so much, he wanted that more than anything else. And later, when Lord Chaitanya was in Shantipur, little Raghunath. He was now a little older. He happened to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through the grace of Adoita Prabhu. And from that example, of how he was affected by the association of devotees when he was a small child. He became our Prayojana Acharya. For all time, the person who teaches by example the highest levels of love of God. His parents were devotees. They inculcated that devotion. Srila Prabhupada also gives his own example, very similar to Raghunath Das Goswami in that sense. Srila Prabhupada writes, from his earliest childhood, he would wake up every morning and his mother and father would be performing arti for Radha Govinda. Everything they cooked in the house was pure boga. Everything was offered to Sri Sri Radha Govinda. And even when he was a little child, every day his father would invite sadhus for dinner prasad. And before the family would eat, they would feed all the sadhus. And little Abai would help his mother and father to serve them. And afterward, his father would ask all the sadhus that please bless my son Abai, that he will be a great devotee of Srimati Radharani. And if we read Krishna book, Srila Prabhupada's dedication was to his father, Gaur Mohande, who Srila Prabhupada explains, imbibe this spirit of loving devotion to Krishna in the line of Lord Chaitanya from the, from the womb of his mother and throughout his entire life. 
And later on, like Raghunath met Das Goswami met Haridas Thakur, Srila Prabhupada met Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who inspired him in the highest principles and the deepest levels of surrender and compassion. This is how Srila Prabhupada would explain it. Of course, we are talking about Nitya Siddha as eternal associates of the Lord, but this is the way the Lord teaches through his devotees. Some of you are like little pralads, male or female, that doesn't matter. <laughs> When you were in the womb of your mother, they, your, my parents didn't know what you were. But you were hearing lectures of Krishna, you were hearing kirtan of Krishna, you were taking prasad of Krishna, you know, via your mother's eating prasad. And you grew up getting blessings. Some of you, have, after you were just children, your parents connected, and you were seeing their example and getting blessings of sadhus like Govinda Prabhu or Gorgopal Prabhu, <laughs> and such a beautiful transformation because of the fire of their love and the fire of Krishna's holy name, that fire gave so much light and joy in your life. Raghunandan Thakur, whose appearance day it also is, he was just a little boy of five years old. But he was, from the womb of his mother, he was hearing the glories of Krishna. His father was Mukunda Sarakar. Because the greatest thing a parent could do is not only teach a child, but to be an example. Because little children see more than they hear. And if, if they hear something about how nice Krishna is, and they see that the parents are actually following genuinely, without hypocrisy, and how they're happy doing it, and how it makes them so loving to their children, and that greatly affects the children with faith and devotion. So Mukunda Sarakar, we read in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, what kind of father and mother? The mother would cook for the deity of Gopinath every day. And Mukunda Sarakar would offer it on the altar with great love and devotion. Then he would offer arti. Then the family would eat or honor prasad. Mukunda Sarakar was a physician. So many of our devotees work at Bhaktivedanta Hospital. Marari Gupta, Mukunda Sarakar, there are many great examples of intimate associates of the Lord who were physicians. I believe Mukunda Sarakar was Brinda Devi from Krishna's Leela, yes? So he was in a very, very exalted. Gopi became a physician. <laughs> and <clears throat> Mukunda Sarakar was such a good physician, even though he was a Vaishnava, a devotee of Krishna, the Mughal king wanted him to be the doctor. So whenever the king was sick, he would call Mukunda Sarakar. There's an example of his power. May I tell? <laughs> Things are going to get late, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> the king was on a raised platform giving audience to so many people, sitting on a throne. People were fanning him and had, they, they had umbrellas over him. And the king called Mukunda Sarakar 
to ask him about some health issue. So Mukunda Sarakar got on the stage, high stage. And somebody started fanning the king with a peacock fan. And when Mukunda saw the peacock feather, he remembered Krishna. And suddenly he was overcome with such spiritual ecstasy that he trembled and fell down. He fainted. But when he fainted, he rolled off the stage and fell all the way to the ground, which was a long distance. And the king was so disturbed by this because he's his doctor. So the king jumped off his throne and ran down the stairs and went to the ground and saw Mukunda laying there because he could be dead, he fell so f And he said, are you all right? And are you all right? What happened to you? And Mukunda Saragar, he was humble. He didn't say, oh, I'm a very pure devotee and I'm in ecstasy <laughs> when, I, when I'm reminded of Krishna. He said, actually, I have a disease like epilepsy. And I got, somehow or other, I got a, an attack, and I fainted. He was so humble. The Mughal king was thinking, he didn't, I know why you fell down, because you saw the peacock feathers, and because you loved Krishna so much, you went into ecstasy. That was his power. So one day, just before the offering of Raj Bhog, the king called Mukunda Sarakar to meet him. So Mukunda told little five-year-old Raguna, Ragunandan, that I have to go, so you should do the offering. And Ragunandan said, I don't know how to do offerings. He said, well, you see me doing it every day. And Raghunandan said, but you're always inside the temple. I don't know what you do in there. He said, just take the food that your mother gives you and put it on the altar, the plate, and just say, Gopinath, please eat. <laughs> and then Gopinath will eat. And then after 30 minutes, then you take the plate off the altar and give it to your mother. So the mother made the plate and said, Raghu, Raghunan, and you offer. He went on the altar. He placed the food, bog, and he said, Gopinath, please eat. <laughs> and then he opened his eyes, and he saw the food was still on the plate. So he closed his eyes, and Gopinath, please eat. He opened, his food was still there. Closed his eyes, Gopinath, please eat. <laughs> Opened his eyes, the food was still there. He started to cry. Gopinath, am I so fallen? Am I so bad that you're not willing to eat when I offer it to you? He was crying so sincerely because he wanted to please Gopinath so much that Gopinath, the deity, Murti, spoke to him. He said, Raghunandan, I already ate. <laughs> I already ate so many times, every time you offer it. He said, but the food is still here? Gopinath said, but I eat with my eyes. And it's now all prasad. And Raghunandan, he said, I, this philosophy of eating with eyes, I don't understand. <laughs> All I know is my father said, if I offer it to you, you will eat it, and you didn't eat it. Is it that I'm so fallen, you're not willing to accept it? You, he, he started crying again. So Gopinath was so moved by Raghunandan that he actually walked down the steps of the altar to where the plate was and ate everything on the plate. But this whole procedure was taking a long time. So Raghunandan's mother was standing outside the deity room, waiting, 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 what's going on? And finally he comes out with empty plate. 
Now, for most mothers, five-year-old boy on the altar for about an hour and, <laughs> and coming out with empty plate, you would probably think something. <laughs> so <laughs> she said, where's the food? Where's the prasad? And Raghunandan just very matter-of-fact, he said, Gopinath ate it. So she didn't know what to do. <laughs> so Mukunda Sadakar comes home and says to his wife, you know, can you bring prasad? And she said, there's no prasad today. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? You didn't cook? He said, no, I cooked everything. But Raghunandan brought it on the altar as you told him. And he was on the altar for a really long time. And he came out and the plate was empty. And he told me Gopinath ate everything. So Mukunda Sarakar asked Raghunandan, tell me everything that happened. And the little child explained. But Mukunda Sarakar, because he was such an advanced devotee, he understood that his son was very special, like all of you. So he said, I want to... He, he had one beautiful big ladu and said, go on the altar and offer this to Gopinath. And Mukunda Sarakar secretly was hiding and watching. Raghunandan offered the ladu. Same thing happened. Gopinath ate, but with his glance. And then Raghunandan, but the ladu was still there. So again, Raghunandan was crying and saying, please eat, please eat. And Gopinath said, I already ate, and said, but the ladu is still here. What will my father think if you don't eat? <laughs> So Gopinath came down and took a bite out of the ladu. And Mukunda Sarakar, who was secretly watching, he, he just, Hare Krishna, he couldn't believe what he was saying. It was incredible. And as soon as Gopinath saw Mukunda there, he put the ladu down and went back. <laughs> in his deity form. So if you go to... Srikanda, Gopinath's temple is still there. And if you go to the Pujari, this was about 500 years ago, this pastime. They kept that ladu and preserved it. And they still have the ladu with, the, with Krishna's bite. It's Mahaprasad that you can see and you can pray to it. <laughs> so Raghunandan became such a great devotee. He was a pujari. He, was puj he became pujari when he grew up older to, for that Gopinath deity. And he spent his life worshipping Gopinath. But he was such a great devotee. You know the story, Abhiram Thakur. When he was just a little boy, he was just five, and he just ate the ladu, Abhiram heard about this. And he decided, I want to, I want to embrace this child. But there was a problem. He actually wanted to offer his obeisances to the child. And Abhiram was such a powerful devotee. He was Sri Dhamma in Krishna's Leela. He had a whip called Jai Mangala, and anyone he hit with the whip would attain love of Krishna. But if he bowed down to someone, if you had a trace of any material desire, you would die. Hare Krishna. So the news spread 
Abhiram heard about five-year-old Raghunandan, and he's coming to offer his obeisances. But Mukunda Sadakar and his wife, they are not seeing their little son as a pure devotee because he's a little boy. He may be, have great devotion, but still, they were thinking if you know, he, he, he wants food and he, <laughs> he wants our help. If Abhiram offers down, he will die. So they were, it was a great crisis in the house. So they decided to hide Raghunandan in a neighbor's house. And Abhiram, Abhiram came and he said, I want to meet Raghunandan. They said, he's not home. <laughs> so he went to a place, that tree is still there in Srikanda. He went, sat under the tree waiting for Raghunandan. And Raghunandan heard that the great saint Abhiram is there. So Abhiram left that house and came running. And when Abhiram who was a very elderly man, when he saw a little child, Abhiram running to him, Abhiram started running to the boy. And Abhiram, Raghunandan offered his Dandavat pranams. And Abhiram offered his Dandavat pranams. And people were watching. <laughs> Raghunandan lived. <laughs> and then he stood up and Abhiram embraced him and they were both crying tears of love for each other. And when he grew up, he was such a dear associate of Lord Chaitanya. Every year in Ratiyatra in Puri, Lord Chaitanya would have Raghunandan, one of the lead dancers for the kirtan party. So these are examples, and there are so many examples of how if the parents really love their children dearly, they will live such exemplary, pure lives for the sake of their children and give their children the opportunity to hear Krishna's names, to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, to worship the deity, and to associate with Vaishnavas. That experience can transform, and it goes so deep. I remember 1979, or 80, something like that, I was giving a lecture at a major university in America. And one of my god sister and god brother's son came with me. And he chanted some slokas from Brahma Samhita before I gave my lecture. He was about six or seven years, maybe eight years old. And I gave a lecture, and I led a kirtan, and I answered questions and all that. <laughs> and afterward, the teacher of the class came, said, your lecture was good, but what really impresses me is this child has such an enthusiasm for your religion. She said, any adult could give good lectures and everything, but the real greatness of your movement is how you inspire your children to enthusiastically accept it. And that, those words really affected me. It is so important. And today, Basant Panchami, according to the Vaishnava Veda calendar, it's the first day of spring. It's when Krishna performs his Ras Lila at Govardhan Hill with Sri Radha and Gopis. There is Rasastali, there is Chandra Sarovar, and all these holy places where the Ras Lila is taking place. But this particular Basant Panchami is very special because the fruit on the tree 
of Radha Gopinath's congregation is so many ripe fruits are coming in the form of children of our devotees. On this day, I want to, from my heart, thank the parents and families who have truly succeeded in their Brihasta Ashram by raising children who really want to give their lives and hearts to Srila Prabhupada's mission. And especially I want to thank all of you. Some of you are not so much children anymore. <laughs> Some of you are older than me when I became a devotee, actually. <laughs> but you have, t with all the alternatives and all the choices that you have in your lives, in youth, the mind and the senses are very enthusiastic to explore opportunities to enjoy. And Mumbai has such a vast variety of maya on every level. But all of you, in a most exalted, extraordinary way, have chosen the higher taste to live with morality, with devotion, aspiring for love of Krishna as the highest goal in life. And many of you are very successful in your studies. Some of you are not so successful in your studies. I wasn't. <laughs> but you should try to be successful. <laughs> I didn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if I knew if I knew that I could be using my studies for the, such a high cause as being but in the service of Krishna, I believe I would have probably been on the top of my class. <laughs> Not because I was intellectual but because I would have had a higher purpose than anyone else there. But I didn't know about Krishna. <laughs> so I didn't do very good. And I didn't really try. And I left school. And I came to India. And I found Krishna and Prabhupada. And then I started to study very sincerely Prabhupada's books. <laughs> So whatever careers you may go in, or raising families, whatever it may be, you have such a exalted fortune of performing your duties in life for the highest purpose. When Prahlad was five, his prayers to Lord Nursingadev were very simple. I don't want to do business with you. I don't want to ask you for anything for myself. I just want to be the servant of the servant of your servants. Just as my guru Narada Muni saved me, as an instrument of His grace, I want to help others. That was His wish. He became a king, but he never diverted from that simple, pure devotion he had as a child. 
Śrīla Prabhupāda, our founder, Acharya, has brought us all together with this gift of love. The prime benediction for humanity is spread throughout the world. The association of devotees in the holy name of Krishna. And all of you have taken it so seriously despite all the distractions and all the alternatives, which are all so illusory and can never satisfy the heart. So please know that it's very important to keep good association, to live by these regulative principles to take shelter of the holy names. Maya will promise so many things and materialistic people will promise so many things. But Krishna has promised. Man mana bhava mad bhakto mad That if you just think of me, become my devotee, worship me and offer your homage to me, you will come to me without fail. Krishna says, this is my promise. Thank you very much.